Good day everybody, welcome to today's video. This is Jerry from Backcountry Ranching and today's video is a continuation of getting this DIY Overland trailer ready to hit the trails and have some fun this upcoming year and hopefully years to come. We're going to be working on the angle iron and stuff today, taking care of that, getting that all on the body and then also doing the checker plating on the bottom so we can get that all prepped and ready for paint. I just got the fender fitted up there and I'm doing something different because the fender was just originally put in with self-tapping screws and I got some Gorilla Glue right there but I also got these threaded inserts that go into wood and I'll show you those. I'm just going to pull that fender off and get an idea. As you see I got a quarter inch bolt in there and you can see the threaded insert and like I said I'll just grab one here from the bag because you can kind of see for reference. It's like a big screw. You drill a hole, you put it in. I got my drill right there with the drill bit stopper. Put some Gorilla Glue on the bit. Thread her in. That way if I ever have to remove it in the future, I can because you know, using self-tapping wood screws, they're good if you use them once, but if you ever have to take them out again, it's a big problem. So I got three out of the five holes here and I'll have to fit the fender up because the other ones will come right down where the repair work has been done. I just got my threaded insert. Excess glue, and we should be good to go. Fender is put on. Could take it off now. I'm not looking forward to getting the rest of this done. There's no doubt that the bodywork is the most time-consuming part of this whole project. It's a lot of work, but when it's done. Hoping it's going to be 100% worth it. Like I said before, I'm so sick and tired of setting up, taking down, setting up, taking down. I'd rather just go somewhere, park, and be done with it. Just getting the angle iron all laid out here. If you ever plan on building a trailer, don't do it the way this one was originally built with leaving the edges wood. Put some sort of protective edging on it. And you're going to save yourself a lot of headache. Just dealing with the most time consuming part right now. Got my four posts in there. They're a little on the long side so I marked them. So I could cut them. Then once I get these four corners in. I can start with the top section. But once all this aluminum is in place gonna seal any issues with it trying to split apart and everything else give it a little bit more structural integrity now it comes the fun part for the angle irons, I picked up this stuff from Princess Auto. We're going to try it out. It's construction adhesive. Eight times stronger. It's on a bunk end at Princess Auto, so I figured I'll try it out. i got a couple tubes. Should be good for everything. i got holes drilled in there as well, but we'll see. What I learned with this stuff is what the heck's going on is you gotta flatten it with your finger this glue will not compress at all i already made that mistake unfortunately and once it's put on or set in place 
Can't really pop it off then. But I think for holding power, this stuff is going to work extremely well. Flatten that out with my finger. Always pushing the corner first. Squeezing it out is another story. The struggle is real. The struggle is real. Now it's starting to take shape. I'm just fitting up the top rail. And this one here was, I wouldn't say tricky, but I had to notch it because of the door. Now the door frame's gonna be protected and I have to silicone all inside there, all these edges. And where I talked about that stuff doesn't level out too well. You can see over here, you got some monster gaps there. Once you squeeze that stuff on, it's like crazy glue. So I did the four corners in that, and I'm just gonna use that black silicone I used on the roof for the rest, because I don't want big gaps like that in the roof. It's gonna wreak havoc, so I'm just gonna start fitting up these end pieces, and we'll get those on. I just got everything fit up. I gotta get all the holes drilled. So I can put those in place, but you can see now what I mean by boxing in the frame. And then once I put the checker plate on the bottom section there, I'll be fully protected and I'll be looking pretty good. Well, my angle iron is cleaned, labeled. Let's get this boxed in so I don't have to look at it anymore. That looks so cheesy. Just wood edges. Don't like it at all. This is the stuff I used on the roof. Got it from Global Auto Body Supply in Calgary. Sure seal. Adhesive sealant. That seems to work pretty good. Alright. This will be for the, the B-roll people. Let's get ourselves a bead of this stuff. It sits down. Nice and smooth. Whoops. So this roof has kind of a slant. So in order to fit this up properly, I need to screw the back end first. Let's go for the B-roll. Well, just change the battery. I don't know how much life this one has either. Time will tell. Let's get this screwed in. Be done with it. Boxed in. Have parts done. Got to silicone seal it still. And then we got to do the checker plate on the bottom. And we will be, not going to say bulletproof, but weatherproof for sure. This should cure the problems with water damage. If not, 
going to be a very sad camper, that's for sure. But I'm liking the way the progress is coming along. I'm exhausted. I've been in garage for at least 10 hours today. It's time to shut her down. Come back out tomorrow. Well, it's another day. Time to spend some more money. Setting into PA here. Looks like she's a little windy. Need to get some more silicone before I head out. They have some here. It's good for metal. And it's water resistant. So we're going to check it out. All right, two tubes of silicone. I also picked up these. Four piece caulking nozzle stopper. <sighs> Looks like I need to trim my beard and get a haircut, but um, you know when you're using silicone and you don't use the whole tube and you don't really want to waste it, but then when you go to use it again, the nozzle's all full of, it's all hardened and you gotta use like a pick or something to push it out. I'm hoping those will work too help prevent that issue. We're gonna find out. One more stop to go, Bolt Supply House. Need to get some more self-sealing, self-tapping screws. And I think I got everything I need from Bolt Supply House. Now, we're gonna start putting the checker plating on and everything will start coming together. So this stuff, the silicone that I picked up from Princess Auto, I picked up two tubes. It's non-paintable, so I gotta be careful where I use it. So basically, it's just gonna be used on the bottom between the metal and the frame. And that's where these power fist nozzle stoppers should hopefully come in handy, because I'm probably not gonna be using a whole tube. Let's get this part over with and move on to the next part of the project. Bessie clamps can definitely be a lifesaver. That looks pretty sharp. Originally, I wasn't gonna have an aluminum front. As I mentioned before, if I keep having problems with the wood, I might just aluminum side the whole trailer. Wouldn't take much to do actually, it'd be pretty easy. All right, non-paintable. Ooh, metallic, look at that. Look at that. All right, let's try out one of these Princess Auto caulking nozzle stoppers. Oh, shit, I just broke it. Oh, well. I broke the first one because I didn't have a hole punctured in the center. We'll see how this works. Got this side done. One fender on. Front's done. Back is in. Still got this side to do, and then RTV all these seams, which I'm not very good at doing. I've already been making kind of a mess, but we'll see how it turns out. Some people can do the silicone really nice, neat, and clean. I ain't me. I've had enough for one night. Armin's. I've been outside in the garage all day, all my days off. I feel guilty because we haven't spent much time together. How you doing? How you doing, Fluffball? Hey? Are you a big ball of floof? Are you a big ball of floof? Look how fluffy you are. Look how fluffy you are, hey? Big ball of fluff. I know. Rawr, rawr, rawr. Hey, how you doing? Belly rubs all around. Belly rubs all around. Yeah. Attack. Attack. Choose violence. Now comes the fun part. I need to put the last piece of checker plating on, but I also have to try to 
mask out where the fender is going to mount, which is kind of difficult to get it lined up perfect. And then coming back over here where my silicon job is a little bit sloppy, it does actually sand down really nice. Because before we do the paint, I'm going to have to sand all that down with 150 grit to get the Raptor liner to stick. I gotta find out if these nozzle stalkers work. It says for storing caulking and ooh, it's been 24 hours. Let's have a look. Oh shit, yeah, that's a game changer. That is a game changer. Just gotta clean off the end there. Oh yeah. Glad I bought those. There's gonna be no more, no more suffering of getting a long pick out and fishing out everything that's hard. Not gonna put that fender on just quite yet. I gotta clean the roof. But I'm gonna coat it with this stuff right here. Liquid rubber, waterproof sealant. Roofs, gutters and ponds. So this rubberized roof says it's supposed to be black. And I mixed it, just in case. But when I opened it up, it doesn't look very black to me. Looks almost like shit brown. But we'll see. I'm just supposed to get like heavy coat couple heavy coats I guess so I have to come back in and hit it again first coat of roof paint is on now I can go ahead and I throw that fender on now and start siliconing the body all the seams just wanted to show you that before I put the fender on, completely fill those holes full of silicone. So hopefully I won't have any issues going forward with getting water behind there. I forgot to touch that up too because I accidentally put a hole there for the self-tapping screw and I didn't need to. Starting to look like a trailer again. Fenders are back on. POR 15, what I good. The roof is turning black as it's drying by the looks of it. Side armor is on, starting to take shape and looking good. Can't wait to get this thing into paint. Right now it's time to shut her down. Motherfucking beer time, Whistler Brewing Company, Bear Paw Honey Lager. I don't mind this stuff at all. All right, motherfucking beer time, everybody. This set of days off. I did not get to where I want it to be. So it's going to delay heading out camping, unfortunately. By the end of these days off, I want it, everything I got done now and the max coupler all welded in. That didn't happen. It's delaying my progress. It is what it is. We're getting there, though. We're getting there slowly. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Motherfucking beer time. I'll see you guys in the next one. I'm pretty exhausted.